Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Unfading Silence. I just wanted to bring a quick little video showcasing my Stamina Nightblade PvP build and exactly what I will be running now that the Waking Flames is live on PC and will soon be live on console. So I hope you guys enjoy. So the first clip right here is nothing too special. Honestly, this is a call for help for anyone in the comment section below, um, if you know this guy on console, uh, he's on Xbox NA. Um, I don't play Necro. I definitely don't pay to win. I mean, I'm just kidding. I love Necro. I love Necro Bombers. Um, they're a little overpowered and soon to be extremely overpowered on the next update, especially with a specific set that is going to be released. And it is going to pair very, very well with Necros, with Bombers, with group play, with solo play. It's a little broken. And I'm pretty sure everyone knows about the set. If you don't know about the set, I'm honestly not going to mention it. Just for the simple fact that it's going to be a little too broken. It never got changed on the last little update. But on to this clip real quick. Um, if anyone knows this guy on console, um, if you could help him maybe just a little bit with his uh, build or his uh, setup or something. Um, I've died numerous times to... Uh, necro bombers and i have no idea why this guy could not kill me instantly uh but if anyone can help him out that'd be great so thank you guys so much but on to the video you broke it all i broke it all we said we knew better
So as I've said at the beginning of the video and everything, I have died numerous times to uh, Necrobombers, this guy in particular. Uh, Necrobombers are extremely hard hitting classes in their own rights and everything and like I said with the new set coming out, it's going to be a little too broken and a little too OP. I can't wait to see the videos and clips that this guy actually is able to do uh, when it actually does come out. But um, yeah, this is just a little trolly video i love trolling him i love solo bombing him and speaking about solo bombing if you don't know the way that magic cadet is going to work on the next update not going to be able to solo bomb so i hope you guys enjoy the bombing while you can so let's jump right into the build so first let's take a look at what food we're going to be running and that's going to be our tam takeaway broth so you can ignore the health recovery since we are going to be running a vampire on this setup but it gives great max health max stam and stam recovery so Along with that, we're going to be running tripods since Stamina Nightblade utilizes both Stamina and Magic abilities. It's going to help out a lot for our recovery. So our main set that we're going to be running on our 2H bar is going to be Stunes. So it's going to be Sharpened, and I enjoy the Oblivion Damage Enchant just for the simple fact that it actually ignores block and it ignores shields. So if you're dealing with a little bit more of a tankier target, it'll melt right through that health bar. So the 2, 3, and 4 piece, amazing. And the 5 piece, when you set an enemy off balance, you're going to increase your penetration by over 5,000 for 10 seconds. So that's going to be really, really good when it comes down to bursting down targets. Our bow is going to be potentates. It's going to be defending. So this next update is all about damage mitigation. So blame Zoss, blame whoever you want to blame. It's all about going to be tankier and mitigating a lot of damage. So the next set that we're going to be running is going to be Balorg. Balorg is an amazing set for a Stamina Nightblade because it gives a lot of weapon damage and a lot of penetration. Also, I wanted you guys to know that the head, chest, and legs will be enchanted with max health enchantments and all the other pieces are going to be Stamina enchantments. Also, all the pieces that we are going to be running on the body are going to be impenetrable. So since the game is going to be going towards damage mitigation, we might as well pair that with this next set. And so the next set we're going to be running is going to be Swift. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Swift is a light armor set, but hear me out real quick. Swift is an amazing set. It's been in the game for quite some time now and everything. It gives max magicka. 
armor, armor, and it reduces your damage taken from players by 10%. Remember, it's all about mitigating damage this time around, so let's mitigate as much damage as possible. Even though we're going to be running two pieces that are going to be light armor, it's still going to work out perfectly. So for the jewelry, it's going to be all infused, and we're going to be running two weapon enchantments and then one stamina recovery, just to be able to have a little bit more stamina recovery on this setup. And... From there, let's go and take a look at what skills we're actually going to be using. So when it comes down to Stamina Nightblade, a lot of the skills don't really change too much. Mostly it's going to be like the ultimate. I know some Nightblades currently are going to be running like Flawless Dawnbreaker or Dawnbreaker of Smiting. I don't think they actually are running Flawless. I think it's just Dawnbreaker of Smiting. But I prefer to run Soul Harvest just for the simple fact that it actually gives Major Defile. And since they ended up changing and adjusting, like, the way that healing works and everything like that, I feel like Major Defile actually works out a little bit better than what people think currently. I just know that it's been a lot easier for me to melt down tankier targets or healers who are trying to outheal my damage and things like that. And when I was running in cap, it just did not feel the same. I had to build up all the way to 120 ultimate just to be able to stun them, just for them to be able to CC break. And then I couldn't stun them anymore for a few seconds, so just kind of got a little annoying. And to be able to use this ultimate at 75 is just perfect. So from there, we're going to look at the back bar. So this is where it's going to change, and it has changed recently, as you guys have seen on my most recent videos and everything. I'm not running Poison Inject or Venom Arrow anymore. I'm just going to go all out with that full penetration. But Timber Guard is going to be for the ultimate, obviously getting that protection, reducing damage. They ended up changing the way that Cloak works for this next update, but there are currently some bugs and some issues on the PTS, so we didn't get a good feel for how Cloak's going to work, but it is going to mitigate a lot more damage this time around, and it's almost going to feel like it's going to be 1.6, 1.7 when we actually had the Purge on our Cloak, for those that actually remember when we actually had Purge, on our cloak that was the last time that cloak was actually like extremely viable but from there i am going to be running a lot of penetration on this setup fully buffed we are roughly around like 30k penetration so it's a beautiful beautiful setup and we are going to be mitigating a lot of damage with this setup even though we're going to be running like you know five medium two light pieces but it actually works out really really well and we'll get to the light armor and medium armor bonuses and things like that shortly but from here let's go and take a look real quick at the cp tree there are some changes in cp that i want to bring up but pause the video as you see fit and just take a look at where the cp is going to be allocated or, or where i choose to have it allocated your cp might look different this is just how i like to run it this is on the pts right now so the new cp is actually going to look a little bit different for the console players since they're not going to get the update until next month and everything like that but here's a chance for you guys to actually see some of the new cp and where it's like going to be allocated and everything like that but as i said before pause the video as you see fit but i will explain a few things along the way when it comes down to cp and how i actually prefer to have my cp laid out as some people prefer to have their cp in certain little spots but i prefer a lot of mitigation when it comes down to damage and everything especially since i play a hundred percent solo i do not play in a group i do not play with another person so all the damage is focused a hundred percent on me there is no one else around or anything like that if there are people around it's just because you know they just have them happen to be there at that time frame and everything but as you can see, the ones that I actually do have slotted right here, Ironclad, reduce your damage taken, your direct damage taken by 2% per stage, so an extra 10% damage mitigation right there, 10% uh, damage mitigation by single target abilities. There's going to be two spots that I know that people are going to ask about, and it's going to be right here, to increase your critical damage uh, by flank and healing. And honestly, that's great on a Nightblade. I, I played like that for a while. It's, it's really, really fun. But right now, I am not built for critical damage. So for this build and everything, we're not going to have those points allocated in the blue tree. 
But if you feel like you actually need those points, or if you feel like you're a little too tanky, and you're like, okay, I need to put out a little bit more damage, you can definitely change the blue tree around, and you can put those points on your uh, champion bar and everything like that. So there is that option as well. But for the red tree, I did change a little bit of things around and everything since we are fighting outnumbered, since we're going to be fighting multiple people, since we're not going to have a pocket healer, we're not going to be running in a zerg or anything like that. I wanted to be able to mitigate a lot of the damage, but at the same time, I wanted to be able to benefit from being under like CCs or negative effects and things like that. So as you can see, the red trees similar, but at the same time, it is different. There are some new points in the red tree, which is like really really nice to see and i really hope that they keep going that direction when it comes down to like changing around how the champion points are going to work and honestly i wouldn't mind them adding an extra spot to where you can actually slot another ability on the cp tree and everything instead of us being able to only slot four pieces under the green blue and red like five pieces would be nice but all in all, I am really glad that they are changing some things around with the CP trees and everything like that. It's going to give like builds different diversity when it comes down to it. I do have a block tank that I will. I promise. I know I've been talking about it. I promise I will release really, really soon, especially since it's about to go live. So I'll actually be able to test it against like Zergs and things like that. But it is coming. I promise. So let's take a look at the light armor changes and everything like that. I'm just going to skim through really, really fast and look at the bonuses. So as you can see right here, it actually increases our physical penetration instead of just the spell penetration. So that's going to be a nice little added bonus with wearing a few pieces of light armor. So as I said before and everything, we are going to be running vampire on this build. I have been doing vampire for the last month or so on the live server on pc and on xbox and i actually enjoy running vampire i am running stage three vampire um i think because of the damage mitigation that vampire has to offer with the 30 percent uh mitigation mitigation of damage when you're actually low health and everything really really shows and it's going to show a lot more when this Waking Flames goes live for console. And since it's going to be going live today for PC, you're going to notice. So now let's take a look at our fully buffed stats and everything like that when it comes down to like the tooltip. And you can ignore the physical and spell resist and everything like that since we don't have a shadow barrier or passive active at the moment. It's going to go up to roughly around 20k just for that on the 2h bar. But as I said, we're stage 3 and we're going to be running the Serpent for the Munda Stone just to be able to have a little bit more uh, recovery on that end of things. So let's take a look at what it looks like with the Shadow Barrier passive. As you can see, it went up to uh, 20k resistance. And let's just take a look at it on the back bar. We are at 24k resist on the spell and 22 on the physical. So nice resistance and everything like that. Plus we're gonna have cloak for that damage mitigation and everything. So this is just at the 120 ultimate. So our physical penetration is gonna be 23,000. It is not showing the extra 5,300 on top of it for the Reaper's Mark or anything like that. As well as the standard status effect for knocking an enemy off balance. So now I want to show you another set you can run if you decide not to run Swift, but it is going to be a little costly at the moment, and that's going to be Pariah. Pariah is a very good set when it comes down to mitigating a lot of damage when it comes down to being a little bit more tankier. I know that when you're low health and everything, you can get upwards of like 30k resistance um, with running Pariah, but at the same time, I feel like a flat rate of... 10% damage from players taken is going to outweigh the extra little bit of physical and spell resist that you're actually going to be getting if you actually run Pariah. But that's just my take on things. And this is what the stats look like with uh, Pariah. Um, you can't really see what it's going to look like completely fully buffed, but I know it's roughly around like 30k spell resist and physical resist. 
But thank you guys for checking out the video. I hope to see you guys out there in PvP just stacking up bodies alongside with me. Not saying I'm actually going to Zerg or anything like that. I can't let this guy, you know, just trigger me or anything anymore. So, you know, let's just forget about that guy real quick. But with that being said, thank you once more. And remember, guys, it's just a game. Let's have fun. Let's enjoy it. And from there, have a good night.